Hello, everybody. It's good to say that. Um, so often we just do sign by sign readings here. So I'm really excited to do the first uh, fireside chat. I'll also be doing a collective on the weekend. If you're wondering what the difference between the two will be, uh, the, the one on Sunday is going to be about relationships and also uh, retrograde because we're in it. But today I'm going to be answering some questions that um, all of you have posted on the member uh, forum here on YouTube. And I'm also going to be taking a few uh, real-time ones as well. We'll get into that in just a second. Um, because I'm intuitive and because my guides are used to me showing up and giving me messages, I also have channeled messages for you. Uh, when I do it on Instagram, I usually don't, but there were some very important messages corresponding with the new moon and with um, Mercury retrograde. So I have a few of those that we'll talk about today, and then I'm going to get into some questions. And, um, and this is very loose in format, so we'll take it where we need to take it, and I'll get a chance to um, talk to you guys a little bit more. I'm kind of blocking the uh, fireside in the background there, but um, I think Apollo is more important in the meantime. Uh, if this is your first time here, you're in for a treat. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh. This is a free form um, reading where I'm gonna just basically work with my guides, uh, my intuition, and some of your questions. Um, just a couple kind of like uh, issues and protocol here, I would say like on how to deal with this. I would say um, at the beginning, let me get through my channeled messages. And then um, I'm gonna answer the questions that you had posted for me, I know Apollo, and then I'll open it up a little bit um, to what else we can talk about. So uh, I'm gonna put this sweet guy down so I can talk to you a little bit more directly, but this should be fun. I, I originated this on Instagram. If you don't follow me there, you should. Um, I'll put a link to it as well a little bit later, but on Instagram, it's I have maybe only 15,000 followers, so there's a, it's a little bit easier to kind of just vibe back and forth. Um, here, I wanted to make sure that I put it on a schedule so that you knew it was here. And I wanted to test it out to kind of see how you guys um, enjoy it, how you engage with it. So let's get into the channeled messages that came through, even though I wasn't planning to talk about them. And, uh, and then we'll get into the various parts of today's reading, which is going to be a little bit more organic, like I said. So what I'm going to say applies to everyone in the room, because we're really, I'm looking at what's coming through um, <laughs> This is about kind of removing blocks today. That was part of it, intuitive development and, and removing blocks. That's the topic sort of of today's um, fireside chat. So um, one of the things that could be blocking some of you that are tuning into this is communication. Um, what I was looking at this morning as I was waking up and half, half awake, half asleep was um, it was all about the mouth. One thing that I was noticing were that the like lips were moving, but the speech was coming at a different time, so basically lip syncing, but um, it was out of, out of sync. When I saw this, there was a message here for everyone that's present to really focus on being authentic and make sure also that the source where you're getting information or the source of leadership or guidance or whatever it is, basically going back to the source, that the source is authentic as well. Um, don't let others put words in your mouth. Don't put words in other people's mouth either. Um, one of the big messages here was about just letting everything um, be as truthful and, and as authentic as possible because one way, shape or form, the truth is going to reveal itself. And so I think it's important this month to focus on um, allowing for that truth to be front and center. Um, in fact, if you can allow the truth to um, kind of guide you, it will empower you. You're not beholden to it. Um, you're basically lifted up by it and you can control the narrative. So if something needs to come to, you know, attention of someone else, it's so much more powerful for you to do it on your own terms, in your own time, in your own words, not allowing someone else to say it for you. Uh, way back when I was studying English and journalism, um, I took a lot of specialty sort of training in public relations. Thankfully, I chose not to do it because it just wasn't my thing. But one thing that I remember, like a cardinal rule of public relations is you have to kind of control the narrative. As soon as something needs to be said, you need to get out and say it before someone else says it for you. And I think it's a really good message that's coming through as we're um, on the heels of a full moon. I know it happened yesterday, but we still have that energy and we have Mercury retrograde. These are two things that are going to be bringing into focus who you are, what you're doing. And there's, uh, you don't want to try to get away with something during those two sort of energies, if that makes sense, right? The next thing, and it was very sort of strange, I saw the mouth again, and this time it was almost like the lips moved into a square type shape, and then I just was paying attention to the square. Um, don't box yourself into something. Don't say something that limits you. 
Um, or don't say something that's going to kind of stick with you. But I kind of saw that box right around the mouth. It's also about speaking and using like your, your vocal cords, your voice box um, to kind of get your word out. Again, saying what needs to be said, making sure that what you say is true, making sure that you understand the power of your words and also how long they sort of stick around and there's gonna be some resonance with them as well. Um, the facts have to back up any argument that you're doing. Um, another rule if you're doing sort of speech and rhetoric or trying to make a persuasive argument is to make sure that you can concede to the opposition and understanding their viewpoint, but then you, you deal with a bunch of facts that can help turn the tide. So if there's something that you're trying to do to help um, uh, another party see it from your point of view, you're gonna have to use facts. Emotions are not enough. And that's one thing that was coming through there. Um, because I'm seeing that box, which is also kind of about, um, I, I just feel like you're stuck with something here. You make sure if you're gonna make a commitment that you're ready to do that commitment because um, it'll stick around for a while as well. Communication, less is more. <laughs> Keep that in the box if it doesn't need to be. Say something if you need to say it, but wait. Wait for the right timing because I think that's also a really powerful, um, <laughs> a powerful and important thing that we forget sometimes is just patience and timing. Because it's a full moon today, um, it's a really powerful day for us to do this fireside chat because um, it's all about revealing hopes, fears, and desires. Um, the moon is actually your friend. It's the kind of primal, intuitive connection that we all have. Um, and at our core, we're all able to tap into that intuition. Sometimes what the moon shows us, though, makes us afraid. Um, I know that my dreams are wild on the night that there's a full moon. I knew something was up. I had to kind of look on the calendar. I thought, oh, that's why. Um, if you feel a little bit tired, if you feel um, increased intuition, if your dreams are way out there, full moons typically coincide with that. It's the opening of the third eye. It's the opening to things that you need to pay attention to, plus retrograde on top of this. So again, for more on retrograde, come back on Sunday. We'll dig deeper into it. Today, it's really about intuitive development. Um, the important thing with the moon coming through right now is it's giving you a chance to tie up loose ends. Um, and now, like within the next, I would say the next two two weeks really, to one month, because it's a moon, but um, the retrograde is giving you a two, two to three week window to make things better. Go back and fix things that need to be fixed. And the last thing is just about some self-care and then I'm gonna get into your questions and I'll um, do a little bit of uh, more introduction here. but. During this period of time, in retrograde and also the full moon, drink more water. Um, I recently switched from tea to just water. Um, I have a couple glasses here. Sometimes people wonder what this is. It's just a colored glass with water in it. But water is so important because it, it literally moves the energy through your body. Plus, we need it to stay alive. Um, so drink that water that's going to help you clear and cleanse. Um, take an Epsom salt bath if you can. Uh, it's very inexpensive. You can go to any convenience store, drug store, um, and usually pick it up for just a few dollars. Um, you probably can get it on online too. Um, and unless you're getting something with a lot of, don't even get something with the scents and you can use your own um, essential oils if you want to like lavender or something like that. So just get the cheapest that it's going to be fine. Salt is salt. And the reason that that's powerful is it helps draw out some of that energy that's building up in us. So drinking the water will help. Taking the Epsom salt bath will help. Tip, if you haven't done an Epsom salt bath before, you're gonna probably want to um, quickly get into the shower or just um, get some water on your skin afterwards because the salt will dry you out. So you might have to kind of like drain out the, the bath water and if you don't have a shower, then just put a little more water in and quickly go over your body to make sure that you're not um, sort of dehydrated. Definitely use something like um, aloe vera afterwards as well. And then meditation. Because once you do all the cleansing and the grounding, then you can really open yourself up to hear and see what's supposed to come through. So these are my abbreviated channel messages, but the guides were really pushing me to talk about the lips, the mouth, the voice, and the verbal contracts that you might be putting into place. Even though I'm covering retrograde on Sunday, those messages were important for you to deal with today. So um, I didn't want them to haunt me all day, so I wanted to share them with you. Hopefully that helps. Um, so let's talk about today a little bit. First of all, I'd like to welcome everyone. It's good to see the kind of first collect, first of two collective readings here. Um, a fireside chat is a chance for us to talk and for me to actually look a little bit more at what you're saying here. Um, I'm going to get to some questions from all of you in the second half. Uh, I want to thank Maria and Dakota for showing up again today. I appreciate them um, popping in for an impromptu reading. I've been doing these on Instagram for um, the past month, and I'm going to try to do 
at least one every four to six weeks here on YouTube and the same on Instagram. And if I can do it more, I will. Um, we'll just kind of see how much there is to talk about. Uh, what I like about this is the format is loose. I'm going to kind of alternate between working with intuition, answering questions, and reading cards. I'll do a little general read um, in the latter part as well. Okay. So I'm going to start with some questions that YouTube members, all the folks with green text here, had um, put on a, a members-only post this week. Don't worry if you're not a member. I will answer some uh, questions from the collective here in a second. So um, the first thing that came through was from uh, Kara, and she was asking about um, what it was like when I was going through my intuitive awakening. Um, the question was sort of like, how did the gift start developing? What caused it to happening? What, what caused it to start happening? And also like, what can you do to develop these skills a little bit? So uh, I'm gonna kind of like do a high level overview of it. I think it's more important to recognize it in yourself. But uh, as I was thinking about this this morning, there's sometimes a misconception that, or misperception that an intuitive awakening is just this like euphoric, amazing thing. A lot of times it comes from a stressful moment. So I'm sure a lot of you have someone in your life who maybe had a um, near death experience, um, a close sort of health scare of some sort in their life. Um, maybe, you know, like me at the time, I was just going through a lot of stressful elements. I was in a toxic work environment. There were a lot of people in my life that were showing their true colors, lots of seven of swords energy around me where people weren't acting the way they should be acting. And then there was some stress in the family too with some health issues um, with relatives. And so basically a uh, amalgamation and aggregation of all of this stuff pushed together and it was like a pressure cooker. And all of a sudden, um, when we have our, when our guard is down, when you can no longer sort of like push something off, it just comes rushing in. So for me, it came in the form of, um, I started seeing things in dreams and I had, I had had this gift my whole life, but at that point in time, it came through with such crystal clarity that the synchronicities were remarkable and, um, incontrovertible. I was going to, um, to work and going into my life every day and I was seeing it play out what I had just seen. Um, you know, the night before or the week before. And so it was exciting and a little scary, to be honest, because we don't hear a lot about that. Um, and then if then I was starting to, in my own just sort of awakening, I was able to sort of see full body apparitions or I was able to hear um, visitations from family members that had passed. And it's not something you talk to a lot of people about because they think you're a lunatic, right? Or they used to. I think that part of the reason that I do question and answer sessions, fireside chats, collective readings is to normalize that experience. So mine came, long story short, came through during a period of stress and I chose to embrace it rather than run from it because I had a few really great teachers in my life at that time that just reminded me that it was important to go into the light and to use the light. And if a shadow energy came through, be it your own or someone else, it was there to illustrate something you needed to work on. Something that I put into my book as well. Um, we're all stars and shadows and we all have that element of, of light and dark. So um, for me, seeing the dark elements were scary. And that's what the moon is about too. Like we'll pull up some cards here in a section, but, but, but the, the moon basically comes through in tarot um, to show us what's coming out of the water fears, desires, the unknown. Um, and so intuitive awakening can also bring all of that to, um, to the front of, of everything. It's like the moon card. So um, I decided to educate myself and I uh, went through yoga teacher training. I've talked about that before. I studied Kundalini uh, yoga. It was really good for balancing out my chakra systems because my awakening was kind of more in the crown and the third eye before I uh, had opened up the lower chakras. So that helped me balance it all out. And, um, and then I, tried different modalities. So I also tried uh, Reiki. And then uh, cards, though, were something that I picked up from the beginning because I had a past life recognition that I did it before. Um, I saw myself kind of like in a traveling fair. And <laughs> I think I was in Paris or something as a, a reader in the past. So uh, I could see the past life connection. I was curious about it. I, I knew without asking that if I picked up cards, it would be a way to, to access that um, and to to develop. So we'll talk more about this in a second. But um, one thing that I want to hit upon, and I'm going to, this is an answer to many of the questions today. It's called a spiritual practice for a reason. You have to practice to perfect it, right? So there hasn't been a day that's gone by, I don't think, 
um, probably since I started reading. Uh, I, I would say at least since 2013, maybe. Yeah, so it's been a while, seven or eight years. Um, I've, I've used the cards every single day, even if I'm just picking something up or I'm thinking about something. There hasn't been a day that I haven't used my intuition. So um, the other thing, it comes, like I have to honor, if, if I'm gonna get a bunch of messages and I have to say them, I bring them through because I'm a channel, right? So, um, so I think that uh, one of the things that was important for me to do was to honor the call. And I was called to do something and I answered. And I keep answering that call every day that I show up here, okay? So that was hopefully a good answer for that question. Um, the recognition of the, the skills is gonna be different for each one of you. Um, for me, dreams, and then also I started getting even like whispers sometimes if I needed to do something or not do something, whether it was internally or actually clear audience, like in my, um, or clear audience rather, audience is this, but um, audience, I would sometimes be able to hear it. And, um, and uh, I just had to honor that. Speaking of like, being able to smell or taste, another weird experience that came through was when I could um, smell spiritual energy. And I know that sounds weird, but um, like there's a, a relative that, that's passed away that smoked, so I could smell them because I sm smelled cigarette smoke. Um, if there's a low frequency, it smells like manure. Um, if there's a high frequency, it can smell fragrant like flowers. Um, you can kind of, or if you smell the perfume of, like I had a grandmother that used to, wear a lot of perfume. <laughs> so I can smell that. So, so you can kind of smell energy and also what people smelled like in a, as a familiarity. So sometimes it, it, this, you can smell, you can taste, you can hear, you can pick it up in your head. Um, you can also feel it on your body. So um, the recognition is going to take time, but we're gonna talk about this a little bit later because someone was asking, how can I read it? Just pay attention first and answer the call is my short answer to this one, right? Um, don't worry, I'm going to get to the, keep some of your questions until I get through these and then I'll answer some here. I just want to um, get through all of these first. Okay, this one was very broad and kind of made me laugh. What's the universe trying to tell us right now? This is from Shelly. Um, had many signs lately wondering if the rest of the collective is uh, feeding still the wrong wolf. Interesting that you said that since, since the last moon was just a, a wolf moon, I believe. Um, I believe that this moment in time, the universe is trying to wake us up. And I was talking to a family member about this. If you look at where we're at like now versus maybe two years ago, um, I don't know how else to say it except that it was more surface or more shallow. And we've gone into the deep end right now of what we needed to deal with. Um, so like that uh, Star is Born song, we're far from the sh shallow now, right? We're way in the deep end and we're dealing with the stuff that we have to and we're learning to swim. And we are going to swim. We're not going to drown in this. We're learning to swim and we're learning to find our way back um, towards the light. So the universe said, hey, there's some stuff you've got to pay attention to. We're going to lift the rock and you got to deal with all the dark stuff underneath it. So that's what's going on. And that's OK, because, again, it's shadow integration work. And that's a lot of what 2020 was about. We're still dealing with some of it in 2021. Um, I think the important thing is to not be afraid to ask the tough questions to look at what's triggering you and to shine a light on it. Uh, I had a very personal experience too when there was someone in my life that just was in a darker frequency and was, in, was I don't know, they, they were out of reach, but I had to kind of like face them one last time. And uh, again, my Reiki teacher said, show that person your light. So in my head, I was like, see my light. I said that to the person and I could see a, a, a shift happening right before me where the power struggle was no longer like they could see that I wasn't going to play games anymore. We were done. Um, there were a few conversations after that. There was no argument, but there was this energetic shift that happened in my head. I was repeating a mantra, see my light, see my light. Like this is over, no more games. Um, and the power shifted. Um, so it's amazing what a thought can do. It's amazing what your light can do. And it can happen subtly or very uh, obviously like that. There was a buildup that led to that moment, but in that moment in my head, I was like, see my light. So uh, know that that's, I would say, one of the most powerful things that we're supposed to be doing is turning on our light, which is why I wore a shirt with a bunch of stars because <laughs> I thought this is the time for us to see our light, right? And instead of meeting that person with shadow energy, I agree with uh, Mia here, uh, you send out what you get, or you get what you send out rather, absolutely right. So if you send out light, you're gonna either be able to receive it or diffuse the shadow energy. So rather than fighting or trying to get even with the person, I was just saying, hey, 
I'm a source of illumination. You're a shadow, go somewhere else. If you're going to, you're not going to find your, you're not going to pull power from me basically. Okay. Which is a great segue um, into uh, attachments and cords. I'm, I'm going to answer Helen's question, which was next in just a second, but this one's a better segue. Um, if you want to know the most important thing with dealing with attachments and, um, and cutting any cords, uh, first of all, let's talk about what it is in case you don't know. So every time you talk to someone, think about someone, um, hug someone, whatever, any, any interaction, we create a little energetic cord. It, you can see it as like a tube, a pipe, an energetic sort of thread, whatever. Um, pick your visual. But we're opening a passageway so that we can exchange information. If you're highly empathic, you might also be maybe on purpose, maybe not, pulling in and accepting some of that energy, right? And also being able to kind of read it. So to read, we have to connect. Um, and so as intuitives, which a lot of you are, we'll, we'll willingly do that sometimes, right? But then you need to like disconnect as well. So I think the important thing here is, first of all, to have good self-care, um, which I'll talk about again and again um, in today's some of these questions. So um, before I do a reading for somebody and before I even answer some questions here today, what we'll do is a mini um, meditation where we call in the light and pull a circle of light around us and release energy. So that's a good practice. And then at the end of the day, you can do the same thing. You always want to kind of like anchor yourself, re re reduce those connections. And um, I have a contract release that I should update sometime. And if we have time today, maybe I'll do an abbreviated one too. But basically the most important thing in any core disconnection or cutting is to believe that you're ready for it. Because I can't help you cut cords if you don't want to. And sometimes when people think, well, what will happen? Like, especially if it's your mother or your lover or your friend, you're like, I don't wanna lose them. You're not gonna lose them. You're going to, it's like imagining that cleaning the stove would make the stove not function. It's the reverse. The stove is gonna heat better, especially if you have an electric one because the surface will be clean. So when we clear out the pipes or remove the cords, we have the ability now to create stronger ones. Um, you can connect and disconnect at any time. It's not like you're gonna pull it out and it will never happen again. So especially the heart, the heart pretty much always stays connected. But if you don't believe it, then spirit's not gonna listen, the other person's not gonna listen and the cord's gonna kind of remain. It'll be a little weakened, but it's still going to be there. So believe it and feel it and then realize that at the very least, a cord cutting could also just be a cord cleaning. And you could say, I wish to clear these channels so that only love and light can pass through. And you can imagine blasting them with light from the universe, um, pulling the divine or holy light through it. And then if the connection is strong enough, it will stay. If it's not, it'll go away. So there's so many ways you can cord cut. It's not just about taking a knife or imagining Archangel Michael coming through. Um, there's so many ways to do it. And I would say the most important thing is to believe what you're saying and then to use your words to also help kind of cut through things. Um, so in my book, there's a, 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 a elevated language called like Godzrasen, like the God's tongue. And basically it's just about really saying, feeling it's an alchemic energy. And I believe that we all have that ability to, um, to basically use words as a sort of weapon too, in a, in a good way, protecting yourself, um, you can also use them to help other people elevate. But if you need to cut through things, say it, see it, feel it, and then do it in your day-to-day -day life. And cord cutting is like multifaceted. It's not just a visualization. I hope that answers your question. Uh, let me go to Helen's question here. Um, I'd love to hear more about how to be decisive. That's a really good question. Um, using intuition and an open heart. I love that I'm soft, easygoing, but I realize that being balanced and an active player in life sometimes requires decision-making and realignment and focus. Um, it's a really great question. Uh, one thing that I will say is that the more that you develop your intuition, the stronger you're gonna get. Uh, so if I went back in time with the experience that I have now and re-entered the workforce that I was in, I don't think I would last a day there or I would have to ascend to a different level because I couldn't just sort of be like a messenger or a helper. I needed to kind of like go into a more, um, yeah, a role where I could make more of a difference. So by tuning in for like seven to 10 years into you know the intuitive channel, you start to trust yourself. You start to trust the voice that's coming through. You start to just find who you are. So um, practice meditating, uh, pra practice using cards, 
practice, practice, practice. It's a spiritual practice. So the more you do this, the more you know yourself. Once you know yourself, what you say comes through with more authenticity and with more power. Um, so you'll get there. Um, I'll pull a card here too, just generally speaking, to see if there's a message for the um, for the folks in this room uh, to sort of see like what can be helped. Uh, how can I help you when it comes to your uh, finding your voice, all of you? Yeah, you've got to feel it. We have the Page of Cups energy here. So the Page of Cups is when you speak from the heart and when you are leading with the heart and when you really mind, body and spirit feel your yourself and feel what's going on, then other people are going to feel that too. Persuasive speakers, good actors and actresses as well, even politicians. Um, the, the really the great ones are the ones that are able to tap into uh, the sort of collective flow of energy, right? You just can't help but to listen, a great singer can do this especially. You can hear it in the grit in their voice or the way that they're they're emoting and pushing the energy out. It's just like, I don't know what they're singing, but I love it. I believe everything that they're saying. So you've got to believe yourself. You've got to feel it. That authenticity, that strength, that power is going to come up um, in time. And um, I think that's sort of a way to help you with that. On questions about being decisive, we got the page of cups here. It's about, does it feel right? Uh, this, this is the hardest and the easiest thing I think to kind of accept sometimes, but um, you know what to do sometimes, but you won't do it. Judgment reversed, right? Like you've received a sign or, um, or you just feel it, but maybe on paper, it doesn't make as much sense or people around you are trying to convince you otherwise. Intuition sometimes means following that path less followed and, and doing something that people don't quite grasp just yet. So you're kind of like a trailblazer, a little bit of a ahead of the curve. Don't be afraid to be that. I think that's super important, right? So, um, so yes, I think that that is the message that I'm receiving with that. Let me see if there's anything else for you. I'll pull one more card. And um, it's all about how you feel um, and not getting overwhelmed by the emotions either. So I think sometimes we can feel the pressure to do something that we don't want to do. That's why the lips this morning were coming through. Um, you can't let mom, dad, boss, sister, brother, friend be um, like a vent ventriloquist, right? Or um, like a puppeteer. We have to kind of like just really embrace our own energy there. You'll get better over time, trust me. Um, but the more that you go into your spiritual practice, the more you know who you are, the less you're willing to put up with all the nonsense because you know you don't have the time to do that, right? I see some questions, so hold for a little bit. I'm about halfway through. I have about four more questions and then I'll take some questions from the group, okay? I don't want to miss anything. So you're going to have to repeat them, just hold them. Um, okay. The next question here was about um, deepening the intuitive uh, or psychic abilities. This is from Laura, um, finding your spiritual path, releasing patterns. You know, the, the, the spiritual path I want to talk about because I would say 75% of the people that come to me, that's one of the questions, like, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Um, how can I get onto my spiritual path? I think it's so important that you should be kind of tuning into what... So I think we get talked out of this as a kid. When we're little, we know it's easy. This feels good, I wanna do this. The older we get, parents, teachers, society tells us how we should show up, what we should wear, how should we should talk, what length our hair should be. All of this stuff, it's kind of like predetermined by social norms. So I believe if you peel away the onion skin enough, you still have what you're supposed to be doing. Um, questions that I can give you that will help you, you being everybody here today, that's trying to get more on your path. I would say, what is it that you would fill your time with if you didn't have an obligation or a constraint like money or a job? If you imagine that you had a whole year to do anything that you wanted to do with, your bills were paid, your obligations were met, you could take with you anyone that you wanted to, friends, family, pets, et cetera. But let's just imagine that all those things were taken care of. What would you spend your time doing? What makes you happy? What's fun? What's fulfilling? I'm surprised often that a lot of people don't know the answer to that. And I think it's because you haven't given yourself permission to have fun, to be fulfilled, to, um, to basically, uh, hold on a second, I'm just gonna <laughs> stop someone here. Um, okay, so basically to really give yourself a chance to really fully um, go into what's powerful. So this is your chance to be happy, to be powerful, to follow your um, intuitive pattern, okay? So um, what I would say for you is uh, your homework assignment, if you choose to take it today, is to think about as a little kid, what was it that brought you joy? What was it that 
really inspired you to um, to sort of like want to get up and, and just have that sense of joy? And I, I mentioned butterflies in a reading this past month. What gives you butterflies in a good way? What makes you excited? So I think this is a, a time to focus on that. I'll pull one card here too to kind of help you break through that. Have you noticed a, a trend here? It's all about feeling and a lot of intuitive energy is empathic. So uh, we have the queen of cups here, creative, um, sensitive, healing, receptive. Are you, you've got to be able to receive, right? So definitely you're getting a call, you've got to answer it. It's kind of like when you have your phone on do not disturb. I want you to take your psychic energy off do not disturb, start to receive the messages and remember you have it in you. So just remember what made you happy. Only you can answer like that spiritual path. But if you're doing something and it feels inauthentic or it feels like someone else was like you're a puppet, you're, you don't want to be that. You've got to find your own path. Um, releasing patterns. We're going to talk more about this in the next question because I don't know the person's name, but they use the unicorn, unicorn squad was their, their handle. But releasing patterns and overcoming blocks. Uh, would Reiki sessions help? Not just Reiki, but I also think that I talk about in tarot, the seven of swords. It's the lie that we tell to ourselves, or it's the facts that we ignore. So I want you to start to pay attention to what you know you need to do. Judgment and seven of swords are coming through very strongly for, um, for releasing patterns. So I think that if you're willing to do something that you know you need to do and give it 110%, you can do it. Um, so releasing patterns, does it feel good? Um, have you been receiving messages to 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 kind of let go of something, but you're not doing that? This is a chance to sort of do that. And we're in a retrograde. So this is a great time to break a cycle. Let's pull a couple cards on this. And, and it really depends what you're trying to break. Is it a, a cycle of addiction? Is it a cycle of codependency? Because I think what you have to do on any of these things are go back to the core of what it was that got you into the cycle and fix that. The cycle is more like this it's almost healed. I had like a little cut on my skin when I was cutting fruit the other day, but it's it's more like the Band-Aid. So um, we got to go to the cut and heal the cut. And that's what's causing the cycle. The cycle is just trying to protect you or it's trying to bring you comfort during the healing process, right? So um, yeah, you've got to go within the hermit. What are you hiding from yourself? And what are you trying to hide from others? Or what are you afraid of seeing? Um, the hermit is about discovery and it's about inward growth and inward sort of um, looking, you've got to turn the lens within. So start by looking at why it started rather than just trying to stop it. Otherwise it's not going to stop, okay? We'll look more at that later if I have a chance. I wanna get through all these questions and then answer some that are coming through here. Make sure I didn't miss anything here. I don't think I did. Okay, um, so the next question was about um, emotions. This is a great one from Darwin. Let me just uh, paraphrase some of it. It said, um, how to handle emotions or handling your emotional fitness level, which is an interesting way to look at emotions. How do you make sure that you can handle an um, emotional roller coaster without having to experience more problems, basically managing emotional stability? Um, okay, this is important. And there was more to this question, but I think I've got the salient pieces of it. So one thing that's important is daily care and limits and uh, also boundaries. Most important, I would say. For those of you, I would say almost everyone in this chat today is empathic, is psychic, is aware. And so it's important for you to be able to understand how and where to exchange your skills and your gifts. I sometimes, uh, I think this is more Hollywood than anything, but I'll use her as an example. Like the Long Island medium, the lady that's at the grocery store picking out an avocado and then suddenly reads someone, she needs better boundaries. She's an awesome medium, I'm sure, but like, I can't just kind of be on everywhere I'm at. If I'm walking my dog, I'm just walking my dog. If I'm eating out somewhere with a family member, not that we do that anymore, that's just a private meal with, with myself and someone else. I wouldn't just randomly go to somebody and read them. Um, I feel like there's a time and a place for that, unless it's like, oh my God, I have no choice but to do this. But if you're constantly on um, emotionally, then you're like a threadbare. You're never going to be able to ground yourself. So I think for me, this, this also is a great way to in, develop your intuition. You set up a time or an appointment with, um, with spirit, but you would also do that with people in your life that need your help or need your time. There's a time and a place, right? So that's the first thing is knowing, is it the right time? Is it the right place? Um, and if you need to say no, say no. You can also say, how about tomorrow? 
it's not an out and out rejection. It's basically saying, I, I love you and I care about you, but uh, but I'm I'm not fully present right now and I wanna be present for you. I have no problem saying, I'll look at this later today and then I'll get back to you because I can't deal with it right now, right? So that's one thing that I do is just say, I can't, I won't, not right now. How about tomorrow? I will be honest in what I can take on. That's a good way to diffuse the seven of swords energy and break a cycle of trying to please everyone, right? Um, the other thing is grounding yourself and figuring out where you are in the equation. So if you have you know, a family member or a loved one that is on that emotional roller coaster, you have to think to yourself like, Am I being dragged along with it? Am I part of what's feeding it? How can I, what am I doing? Why am I in this? And do, do they want my help? Will they benefit from my help? You have to assess yourself. So kind of put an anchor in the ground for a second and sort it out and think, why am I here again? And why is that happening? And I think that helps too. And the most important thing here that is also coming through is you can't hide from an emotion. So. I scribbled some notes and I wrote, feel it, don't bury it. Figure it out, the trigger and fix that. So back to sort of like the cut that I had, you have to go back to that source, to that scar, to the wound, heal that. The, the, then the cycle is ready to be ended, but you have to heal yourself first. I hope that answers the question. Um, oh, one last thing that's coming through as I'm looking at this, there has to be a proper exchange. So for those of you that are highly empathic, naturally so, highly intuitive, naturally so, uh, maybe you have a lot of people in your life that constantly come to you and ask for things and sort of unload. There has to be a proper exchange. I'm not saying you have to like charge them, but if you're going to lean on them, uh, I'm sorry, if they're going to lean on you, you should be able to lean on them as well. So there should be other areas of your life where that exchange is and that reciprocity is happening. Otherwise, if you're doing it all the time, yes, maybe you do need to proper, properly compartmentalize and have an exchange. The exchange can be whatever you figure out, whether it's money, time, energy, something, um, because that's leading to that roller coaster. If you're giving and giving but not receiving, you're setting up a spiritual deficit and you're telling others in the universe, I'm not worth that. So reverse the deficit and ask for more and say no to some things and you'll be better in that respect. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Courtney, we have two more and then I'll get to you guys. Okay, Courtney asked a question here saying, I would love to hear more strategies for breaking karmic cycles in ancestry. Great question. Patterns, and, patterns that I have observed in my parents and their parents, et cetera, um, and basically how to break free from those limiting beliefs. Um, I think that one really cool thing that you can do, especially for people that have passed, is to send some love and light and forgiveness their way even if they were um, uh, just a pain <laughs> to live with in real life, when, when they've crossed over, a lot of times it's so much easier because um, they're not tethered by all of the trappings in real life that made them difficult to deal with. Maybe you know they were argumentative or whatever. Um, so when they're on the other side, you can just say, thank you for teaching me. Um, thank you for also showing me what I didn't wanna do. I can find blessings in that experience, even if it was difficult, but I'm ready to move on and you should be too. So I'm going to send you some love and light. I'm going to pray to, um, you know, the powers that be that you can go further on your journey. So you could just imagine them being surrounded in pink or white light, just kind of, or green light. Green is the color of the heart. Pink is really calming. White light is very pure. You could just imagine lifting them up and you could see that energy. When you heal your ancestors, you heal everyone in your family tree. It's a wonderful thing to do. Um, a simple mantra with your family is just like, you're not your, you're not your family, you're not your mother, you're not your father. Um, they were on a very sort of practical level. They were the physical vehicles to bring you to the planet. They have a choice when they enter this, when, when you enter the planet with them to be more than that. But their sort of contractual bond with you was at minimum, I will bring you into the planet. I will give you the genetic material that you need, the food that you need for a while, uh, the body that you need to kind of get into this lifetime. They, they were the gatekeeper basically at the beginning. But if they don't kind of keep up and they're not a steward and they're not present, then at that point you can release them. Um, you can let them go, okay? By the way, I'm, um, when I do get to questions here, they can't be, they need to be broad like this. So I see a specific question coming through. So more on that in a second, hold the questions until I finish. And then um, I'll still try to answer yours in a broad 
spectrum, but like th this should really be what I'm hearing here, which is questions about ancestral um, disconnecting or intuitive development or like how I'm triggered by what's going on in the world. How do I deal with that? It needs to be something that will benefit the collective. Anyway, um, back to what I was saying with the family, uh, understand that they're kind of like an elevator and you're able to kind of go back into that elevator when you need to, but you can also walk away and you have your own power. Uh, and just because they brought you into the world doesn't mean that they get to control you. It was a contractual thing that helped you get to this planet and it was a means to an end. But at some point you can just forgive them. They were just two kids that grew up. They were just two people that um, wanted to bring a soul in or maybe didn't want to bring a soul in, but you're a free agent at this point. So imagine now that you can freelance, that you're free of that energy and that you're not defined by their energetic signature or their patterns either. So, you know, uh, an example, my dad smoked. I've never touched a cigarette in my life and I'm not even tempted to They disgust me. So um, we can have like you can have one pattern in your life and it's not going to affect me. I don't have an addictive behavior towards um, smoking or alcohol or any of that. And I've seen some of that in different parts of my family it just didn't carry through to me. And that's a good thing. So you can break the cycle. You can just choose. That's not me. I don't want to do that. I don't want to follow the same path. Um, with my dad, it ultimately ended up giving him COPD, heart failure, and cancer. So he got everything on the back of the cigarettes package. So I forgive him for that, but I also just chose in my lifetime to do a healthier lifestyle because that wasn't, I saw what the, the flip side was, right? So you have a choice. You don't have to do what your parents did. It also doesn't make them bad. He was, like I said, a, a little kid that grew up and did the best he could, right? When we stop putting parents on a platform, um, and just realize that they're humans like us. I look at myself now and I think back to like myself when my parents were raising me at this age and I think, I don't know how they did it. They were amazing, flaws and all, right? So just kind of like contextualize things a little bit, take the power back, see them as an evolving soul, just like you, and you're gonna be okay, I think, all right? Um, let me look at the next question and then I'll move on to collective ones. Um, this is from Narissa. There were a lot of pieces to it, so I'm going to try to highlight it. Um, the first one was about uh, what she was saying, like imposter syndrome. syndrome. Um, I guess recognizing psychic abilities and trusting them and not thinking that they're coming from nowhere. I have a couple of important messages with respect to that. If you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. Also, if you don't believe that you're able to connect, spirit's going to have a hard time connecting with you. So I would focus on the latter part first. Your meditation to yourself would be, I'm a powerful intuitive or medium or empath, whatever you wanna call yourself, potato, potato. I'm, I'm a powerful intuitive and I'm ready to receive. That's your, and then receive. And then when you receive it, don't question if that was valid. Write it down and um, take your time. I wrote down here, learning to read is like learning to read. If you go back to whatever language you learned, um, doesn't matter, you start with the alphabet, it's the same cycle. A, B, C, D, um, et cetera, et cetera. Then you take those letters and you put them into words. And then you take those words and you put them into sentences and then into paragraphs and then eventually into long form. It doesn't happen. You're not gonna, as a you know seven-year-old, pick up war and peace unless you're amazing. Um, most people are gonna start with Dr. Seuss probably, right? Or something like that. You're gonna work your way up. So the same thing holds true in intuitive work. Don't dive into the deep end. Um, put your feet in, in the shallow end first and start to feel it out and learn your language. Every intuitive will speak a different language. There are common themes. There are things that we can all hear and feel and see, but we can all kind of see it from a different perspective, just like languages, just like religion. There's no right or wrong, none are better. So you need to figure out your alphabet and then learn it and then develop that into words and symbols and then take the symbols and start to put them together. Um, so the more that you practice, the better it gets, the more you trust it, the less you feel like an imposter. Baby steps. Start to recognize synchronicity in your life. It's showing up every day. You just may not be aware of it. I talked uh, in the past month's reading about learning a vocabulary word. It's very, very appropriate to what you're asking here. Um, so when you, <clears throat> when you learn your own spiritual or psychic vocabulary, all of a sudden, uh, as spirit starts to speak to you, you can receive more. They're gonna keep sending you signals and different new things that you're gonna always have to decode. But keeping a journal, paying attention, looking at timing, looking at how it all pans out in, in the everyday is what's gonna be really important there. So 
that's my kind of uh, longer answer to that question. Um, why is it coming through? Because you're psychic. <laughs> so what should you do with it? Whatever you want to do with it. You don't have to just be a reader. Uh, you can like writing an art. That's that's intuitive medical profession. So like if, you, if you've ever been to a doctor and they like they just they're able to read you, they don't maybe know what's going on. They think it's all their book knowledge, but it's not just that they take an intuitive leap based on their contextual sort of data that they have in their head. And then it's like, but I think I need to do this or we better run that test or I, I, I need to ask about this family trait. That intuitive leap is psychic. Um, a painter that comes up with something that they've never seen before and it's just, it hits a common chord with everyone, that's psychic. A musician that wakes up in the morning and hears something in their head, a poet or a lyricist that writes down those lyrics that they got at 2 a.m., that's all psychic downloads. You can do anything you want with it, from building a house, to saving a life, to writing a book, to showing up here on YouTube today, okay? It's up to you. That's something you'll have to figure out. And um, how do you ever confirm other than just knowing? Well, time and experience. So write the stuff down. This is so important. Put it in your phone. That's typically where I put a lot of mine, but I'll also write it out on paper. Um, if there's something you have to remember, write it down and then wait for it to happen. It usually happens. Um, it may take a day, a week, an hour, a month, a year, a decade, but you're going to start to learn then how your timing works with that. Okay. I think that's the main piece. Okay. Let's um, let's take a look at some questions here. I'm going to go back to the one that was a little too specific, and I'm going to try to make it general. So let me see here from Heather. You were saying that... Um... Okay, so you want to know about your alignment on your path, which is something that I talked about a lot. Um, you, there's a few questions here. So um, let's start with finding your path. What I was talking about before is it should feel right. If it feels right and you, you sort of wanted to be a shaman, awesome. You've got to sort of like, that should be something you want to do, not something you feel like you have to do. That's the best advice I can give with that. Um, when am I going to find, this is so important. Like we're going to talk more about romance and relationships on Sunday, but I'll touch upon this here. Um, so a lot of times people are looking for that special person to come into their life. So I don't remember which sign it was for those of you that show up all the time, you can remind me, but you are the one that you love. You need to love yourself first, not in an egomaniac way but you need to feel completely whole and you need to be okay with the idea that maybe the person's not coming in now or ever. Once you are okay with yourself and not feeling like you're lacking, it's not going to say that they're not going to come in, but you just have to sort of be okay with like, this is good. I am enough. I'm more than enough. And then when you sort of feel that someone else is going to look at you and think, yeah, I, that person seems to have it together. Right? So I'm going to pull a general card for everybody. Cause I want to make this broad scoped enough that everyone can benefit from it. Um, I don't do just reads for like, is my boyfriend coming or am I getting this? But I will answer questions. I'm feeling blocked finding my partner or uh, I can't seem to make it work in this career that I want. Like that kind of stuff is good because everybody can benefit. So let's look at how you can get closer, all of you collectively, to finding the love that you're looking for. Um, assuming that you've practiced the, the sort of self-love first. Um, how do you feel about yourself? We have the queen of swords in reverse. She's a lovely card, um, but when she's reversed, there tends to be critical thoughts about oneself. So starting to feel really positive about what you bring to the world is so important and to not diminish yourself in words or in thoughts. So saying, oh, it's just me. Like sometimes people are like a table for one. Oh, is it just one? Yeah, it's one. And it's not just one, it's me. <laughs> so let's, like, let's not diminish that sort of stuff and make one feel like it's less than. Um, aces are good. That's what tarot starts with, the, um, the minor arcana. You know, you've gotta have the ace before you get anything else. So yeah, it's one. And then more comes from that. So be happy with who you are, speak and think positively of yourself, focus on self-love and integration. That partner will come in, probably when you're least expecting it, okay? All right, so let me look at now is the time that you can ask. Try not to bombard. Um, let's see if there's any general questions here about um, blocks in your life or intuitive um, development. I'm going to answer one here that I'm seeing from Caitlin. Numbers are just you being aware. Uh, I get that question all the time. I see 111. I see 444. What does it mean? 
for me, I go to tarot and I look at how the, the numbers associate in tarot. Even numbers usually show me that um, things are in sort of like, yeah, they're, they're synchronized, they're balanced. Odd numbers show growth. So um, if you, there are angel numbers and you can read up on those if you want to. But um, for me, like if you look at tarot, ones are beginnings. So and triple, quadruple, whatever, however many ones, it's usually good. It's a new start. Um, twos, fours, sixes, they're pretty good across the board. Twos usually have a decision to make. Fours, uh, you're bringing more to the fold. You're doing foundational work. Um, sevens are very lucky for me. It just kind of depends on what you're looking at. But for me, if you're noticing that, you're just aware. So now turn your awareness beyond the numbers. So the numbers are bringing your attention to something else. The number itself isn't as powerful as what it's bringing your attention to. So focus on what's going on in your life when you notice the number and how the number makes you feel, okay? So basically that's what I would say. But um, for me, I go to what, I go to the suits of tarot and what it reminds me of, um, or not the suits, but like the numerology and tarot. A routine you can help us come into our own. Um, well, I, th I think the most important thing, as I said, is have like a positive mantra each and every day, thinking about something that you want to do or something that you want to create. That's going to be super powerful. Um, and let me just see, I'll pull a couple cards here. So how can you find your power? Um, and then I'm going to look at blocks and career because that's a great question. So first thing, um, how do you can kind of find your voice, your power? Okay, so like I said, aces are a great beginning here. So this is about planting a seed. A lot of times it will come through as a seed or an egg or you see a lot of growth around it like we see here. So what is it that you want to create? What is it that you want to do? What do you have to offer? Um, the way to turn the Queen of Swords upright is to figure out what are you powerful in um, creating, doing, or offering to the world, and how can you do more of that, right? Set into motion <clears throat> something that you care about and nurture it like it was an egg. See that sort of grow over the next year. I think that's important. Let me look at the career growth, and then I'll answer the other question about if a dream is just a dream which is a great one. But let's look at career growth first um, or overcoming. Let me look back here. There's so many questions that fly by. So I'm only going to pick a few here that I can see. Um, okay. So I think it was like blocks and career. So let's pull a couple cards on blocks and career. So for blocks and career, I think the most important thing to do is to not have a fear of, um, of lack, basically. The four of coins can sometimes come through when you're afraid, like, will I ever have enough? Will I ever, or is this going to go away? Uh, is this as good as it gets? Or I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop, waiting for something bad to happen. Don't go into a limiting thought process. Imagine that instead you're building the foundations to the house and there's more to come. I can't wait for more. I'm, I'm ready to receive more. This is great. Um, surprise me with more abundance, kind of put that energy out rather than the limiting thoughts of, uh oh, um, you know, when is this going to go bad? To, to not be afraid of the unknown. Um, Eight of Swords is a card where you can't always see everything that you need to. Um, another way to kind of counteract this is to be very transparent with your hopes, your fears, your dreams, and just put all of that out there, right? And then the Six of Pentacles is a lot of what I was talking about earlier, which was picking and choosing. Uh, where to invest time and energy. It was reversed. So more balance in that reciprocity or that exchange. Um, if in your own career, let me just see if there's any sort of blocks like from a uh, from your boss or from your coworkers. Well, sometimes that's a, a, a cue for you to move on. If nothing's happening, nothing's happening. Um, you have to make that change within. And if they still don't react to that, you might be at kind of like a, a a dead end and it's time to go right or left or up or down or or through, but you can't stay put basically, right? Um, dreams, I saw that question. So here's a couple of tips. Um, with dreams, the more psychic a dream is, the more vivid it is. So if you wake up and it's like you, you just open your eyes and you can see, feel, hear, remember everything and it was almost like you were there. That was That was most likely a psychic dream. One, one thing that you want to do is not take everything literally. So if you fall off a building and hit the cement, um, it doesn't mean that you're going to die. 
Um, if you die in a dream, it could mean rebirth. It could mean growth. So you want to go into the symbolism. It could mean that like you're being pushed too far, right? Someone's pushing you and you feel like you're going to, you don't, they don't have your back. You don't have a safety net. You can look at some of the more symbolic energies around it. Um, you know, if you, if you see something that's not fun, like sometimes I've seen, you know, like just imagine that you're walking on a, a field and you see, you know, manure or something like that. You need to clean things up, right? That That's a, a clear sign from, from spirit that it's time to clean things up. There's something that's muddying up the way. So even if it's a really weird symbol like that, sometimes the weirder the better. So I write them all down and I go into, like if you watch my monthlies, if I get an animal that comes to me or uh, something in nature that comes to me, I really kind of go into it. I'm like, all right, so like right now I think of an elephant. That's what's coming through. So an elephant to me is super sensitive, super intelligent, um, sometimes gets in its own way, right? Because it's so big. Um, so really making sure that you don't make a misstep. So I would just go into the symbol and have fun with it. That's part of, I, I guess the more you read, the more you just look at a symbol and you can look at it from every angle. So have fun with it. Imagine like you're an, uh, an investigator and you're just sort of getting out your magnifying glass and figuring out what the clues are leading you to understand, right? Um, if it's just a dream, it won't, uh, it, it could just not make any sense. Like it's just a lot of random stuff. Sometimes our brain just needs to decompress, right? And kind of do like a mental data dump. And uh, if you were listening to something the night before and that song is in your dream or you talk to someone and they're in your dream, it could just be remnants. The more potent ones are the ones where like you're sweating when you wake up or your heart's beating or you just feel like you, you were there. Pay attention to those, okay? Let me see here. Um, how do I clear things? Um, well, I think that's a lot of, there's so many things that you could clear, clear your thoughts. First of all, clear your space, um, clear what you're putting into your mind, your body, the environment around you. It's, um, every level. So take your time one thing at a time on that. Um, this is an interesting one. I believe something manifests as energy thought before it manifests in reality. My intuition is telling me about a situation. Yeah, I believe that too. I, I, that's why I like science fiction, because if you look at m movies, books, and even comics where they show sort of all these ideas for what the future could look like, it inspires technology. So of course you dream it before you do it. Same thing with like architecture and art. You've got to sort of like get this idea and then it inspires the actual execution. So yeah, if you can't see it, believe it, dream it, feel it, no one else is going to be able to. And I steadfastly believe that. So let's see, um, the next one, I used to write my dreams in a journal, but you've been doing voice recordings. Yeah, any, any way of recording a dream is going to be fine. And uh, it's funny that you mentioned Inspector Gadget. I watched that cartoon as a kid. Um, yeah, I think the important thing for you to do is just to go back and analyze it. Talk to someone when you wake up about it a little bit as well, right? Um, let's see. I'm gonna go up a little bit in the things here. Okay, what can you do to help yourself know which path to take if you're noticing positive signs, numbers, positive deja vu? So if, um, if something's popping up again and again and again in your life, it's probably because you need to pay attention to it, right? So we're talking about patterns, by the way. This answers one of those earlier questions that the members posted on the on that members only post. Um, so if, if you notice you keep dating the same kind of person or you keep going to the same sort of career, there is a pattern in your life that the universe is trying to help you get past. So look at what annoys you with it. So for instance, if you're dating, if you have a lot of lovers in your life and they tend to not be honest, look at yourself and think, what am I, am I as honest with myself as I need to be? Because again, it starts within, am I being as open as I need to be with the people around me? Um, what am I doing when the dishonesty happens? Looking at what you can do to, to really change yourself and then make a decision, say it, feel it, believe it and do it and say, I will not take this anymore. Like I'm not going to allow for that to happen. I would rather um, spend some time alone than have people in my life that are speaking, you know, <laughs> things that are not true to me. Like I'm, I'm, I demand that truth in my life and I will wait for someone that's in the same energetic signature. I think that's one big thing when it comes to relationships and patterns is to wait for the right thing. Cause a lot of times we're just hopping to the same path. That's ultimately what got me out of my corporate career 
because there was nothing really wrong with any of these jobs, to be honest with you. You know, you kind of get what you sign up for. So the pressure cooker jobs are great if you want to make money and not have a lot of time and energy left over after it. So I couldn't really get angry at what was being expected of me. I just had to look at that's not the exchange that I want. The money wasn't enough. So I needed to do something different. And, and I was willing to take the opportunity cost to do that. So you have to look at why you're doing it. There's, there's a codependency usually with most cycles. What is it doing to either hide what you don't want to see or make you feel better? And then once you look at that, and it's tough sometimes to see that you're a part of that cycle. Once you see what that is, fix it, the cycle breaks down. So let's see. Um, I see if don't stress if you're not if you're having a hard time with super chat, just join in on one of my Instagram lives. Um, OK, you said you've been having dreams where you're going back in the past, but also who you are now. Yes, you can definitely do some work on um, past healing. Like I talked the other day about EFT healing, where you can kind of like tap and go back in time and release energy. You can do that. I've had dreams also of like time traveling, like seeing the future and then seeing the past. And like so time is kind of. It's a construct and when you're up in spirit, it doesn't matter so much. So here on the planet, when we do astral projection, sometimes we can go forward and backward. So um, absolutely, you can do, uh, you can see yourself from a different light now. You can go back and see that little girl, little boy differently. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, I see a couple people. I'm so sorry if you're having problems with Super Chat. I'm seeing them come through for others. So just don't worry about it. You can just type your message out. Um, Let's see what's going on. So this is not a fire chat. It's a fireside chat. A fireside chat is exactly what we're doing right now, which is chatting and talking about intuitive development and blocks in your life. It's, it's a little less uh, formal than my normal uh, reading. So if you want to look at one of the readings for your sign, just go back and take a look at any of the ones that I've done for this past month. And if you want to join the collective one on Sunday, we'll be doing that. Let's see what's next. Um, is there any questions about um, intuitive development that I haven't touched upon here for some of you? Um, okay, does the full moon have an impact when it lands on your birthday? Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's kind of like a double blessing, I would say. The full moon or a new moon are really powerful because they're like endings and beginnings. A uh, full moon gives you a chance to release things and to kind of uh, really look at everything from a holistic point of view. And again, if there's something you have to pay attention to, it's going to come up. You might feel triggered. You might see more or feel more during this period of time. So um, if it's on your birthday, then you just have a, a chance to really do something big. I mean, just kind of surrender to the intuitive energy that's coming through. Let's see what else is coming through for some of you. Um, OK, suggestions on how to choose between two paths when you feel called to do both. Um, if you can do them both at the same time, there's nothing wrong with that. It's kind of like when you're back in school and there's a double major, right? Um, so that gives you a chance to, um, <laughs> to I, I do feel like there is sort of going to be a choice here on, uh, if I were your coach, I would say, what can you make the most impact doing and what would bring you the most joy? Hopefully it's a combination of the two. So, you know, I, I, I do a few things. I do the live readings here. I do one-on-ones. I write. <clears throat> I would I would like to do more public speaking. I like to kind of do a lot of things. And I think you you just have to choose, though. If you do more of one, you have to kind of pull back on something else. So um, I'll pull a card here just for general advice on picking a path. But it's kind of like two of wands and two of swords are very close. The difference between the two of wands, though, is that the person is just going to go with it. And the two of swords, the person's stuck and worried. So I would say just pick one and move. And then you can do the other thing in your free time, too. But um, <clears throat> we have the seven of wands here and seven of wands is about not having to do everything yourself. Um, this actually says clearance here too. So I would say, look at what, what's kind of occupying your time and space and just clear out some more time for that and realize that you can't, uh, you can't juggle everything at once. So I think choosing what really feels right is the, the most important thing here. Um, Okay, I see a question here in Super Chat from Toya. Are subliminals and binaural beats, meditations, and sleep meditations with affirmations safe for us to be listening to? You know, I have a great piece of advice on this. You should probably be recording your own if you're going to be listening to something that's repeated. Um, 
it's as safe as the person that's creating it. So um, I would say tune into how much you trust that person. And if they're going to be talking to you all night long, you really need to trust them. I think music's fine. Um, sometimes we all need something to kind of distract us or put us into a, a kind of like meditative state. So listening to beats or I, I prefer something like someone playing the gong or a singing bowl because it's a nice, soft, soothing sound, especially a gong, depending. It doesn't have to be like loud. Usually once they've hit the initial note, it's actually just kind of about moving it around just like a singing bowl. So um, I would say something like that's probably a little safer than having someone repeat uh, words over and over again. You gotta make sure you know what you're listening to and what their energy is. But if you use your own voice, it's gonna be so much more powerful. When I learned how to teach yoga, we were encouraged to record our own voice in a chant and then listen to that because we're attuned to our own frequency, right? Sometimes following intuitive guidance goes against logical and straightforward rule, but going against intuition just doesn't feel right. How to deal with going against the grain. You have to be willing to call your own bluff, right? So it doesn't happen easily and it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, I would say that there comes a point for all of us when you just can't ignore what you feel. I'm gonna pull a card too, just for advice on this, but a couple cards here. Yeah, it's peer pressure, it's coming through. Okay, so it's mostly peer pressure. So I got the Three of Cups reverse. The Three of Cups is a good card, but reverse, it can often be wanting to make other people happy or trying to do what is going to bring you the most sort of like success um, <laughs> with other people. Again, it's like that group consensus. We also have it here with the Six of Wands reverse, which is wanting to feel the love from other people. When you know who you are and you know what you want to do, um, you're willing to kind of take the heat for whatever uh, whatever it is that drives you. Um, I feel like some of us are overcompensating for maybe what we didn't receive back in school, as a kid, as a brother, sister, as a child. The Five of Pentacles is often trying to find that confirmation in others. And the reminder here is you always have the key. This is probably one of my favorite Five of Pentacles cards. So you just have to wake up, take the key and move forward and open the door. Yes, some people won't get it. Yes, going against the grain is, is a little odd. Yes, you'll lose some friends, but you'll also gain some too. How to find out what your main passion is. Um, I am creative filmmaker, painter, and also Akashic reader and healer. So we talked a little bit about this earlier, but I was, uh, I'm going to help you with this because it's, it's related to that. Why not use it all? <laughs> so why not use film to heal? Why not use what you're receiving in the Akashic Records to bring across messages in your painting and your filmmaking that helps others? Why does it have to be either or? Why does the psychic, intuitive, or spiritual side have to be divorced from our careers? It doesn't. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to go into a conference call and say, wow, the energy in this room is way off. What you could do is instead use your empathy to say, I feel like our communication has been breaking down a little bit. I want to give you a chance to clear the air. How are you feeling? That's how you do it. You don't need to go in there with crystals and smudge. You can do that after the reading or after the meeting or before. But like, you don't want to scare everyone with the spirituality. They're not ready for that just yet. But you can use your intuition every single day and every single conversation to make life better, right? So... Uh, I kind of, it's a dial that you turn up or down. So it doesn't have to always be way out there. It can also just be very practical. And people don't even need to know that you're using your intuition. So hopefully that helps. I answered the question about ancestral stuff. You can scroll up a little bit. I think the main thing for you to remember is that you are not your ancestors and you can heal them. You can just basically go in and do a contract release too and say, I release this like connection and lineage. I no longer need to carry this burden. This was yours. This is not mine. I forgive you and I release this. I'm just scanning through all of that. Um, let's see. All right. I would like to just pull a couple cards here for the collective as well. I'm going to see if anything else comes through and then I'm going to um, just give you a little quick read for the next day or two. Um, let's see if anything else. Fear of growing old, not having enough time. Okay, one thing that I think is super important. Um, we have exactly enough time to do what we need to do. It's just a, a matter of being present and, and making the most of it. Imagine today what you would do if you were told that you had um, a week to live or a month to live. You should probably be living every day or every month with that same discernment. 
um, because we have more time than we give ourselves credit for, but we spend a lot of it worrying. So I would say start engaging yourself and uh, doing things that like really connect you on the highest level. Um, and yeah, it's time to heal, recover, and grow with the Seven of Pentacles is what we're seeing with that. I'm glad that you liked that you can be both. I, I believe I'm looking at what um, Air Witch wrote here, which is yes, be an artist and a healer. We're supposed to be bringing this message. You can you can do it in anything. You can be a teacher, a doctor, a politician, a filmmaker, a counselor. It's just all in how you integrate it within your practice. Your professional practice and your spiritual practice can blend. Um, and it's never about pushing it into somebody's face. It's really just about using the tools because there's nothing bad with being empathic. I, there was a question that came by, can you learn empathy? Absolutely. Um, I think some people are more empathic than others, but I think that you can sharpen that tool. It's just about stopping <laughs> listening to yourself and just sort of like pushing your energy out a little bit and seeing how that person feels and what they might be thinking about and kind of what, like going in the what if energy. Well, what if I did this? Or how would they feel about that? And just sort of like asking those questions that will help a lot. So, um, let me pull a few cards for you. And then um, if there's a last question or two, I might take it. Otherwise, you can ask me more. Well, I mean, well, we're it's gonna be a little different in the collective. I have a collective coming up on um, the weekend, but, um, but you should join that one too. And I'll see if there's anything here that I need to address in that one too. Okay. <clears throat> let me just pull some cards for those that are present today. We're gonna look through the lens of, um, Overcoming blocks in your life, if you're blocked in a relationship, if you're blocked in love, if you just feel like you need to be blocked. So let's look at blocks first, if there's any blocks that we can overcome, and then we'll look at intuitive development. So let's take a look at this. Um, so actually I missed one card, hold on, near future. Okay, it's interesting because we actually, I'm gonna pull it down here because I realized I missed one card. So um, <laughs> the same two came up here. We've got some different cards um, around it, but this is again, really celebrating with it upright, I would say celebrate who you are, what you do and really feel joy in that. And then don't worry about success that will come if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. These are like sister cards. Sometimes I get five and seven of swords and sometimes the, um, the six of wands and the three of cups come through because they're peer pressure where the other two are about like accountability and conversation. Set, uh, center card, I am ready, I am willing to be happy. I'm ready and willing to receive all that's coming to me. I'm ready for that. Um, and I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna be patient for um, allowing the right conduit to also connect with me. So that patience and that fear of being alone don't be afraid. Just set set the table here and, and be ready for that higher energy to come through. And you should be happy. If you're not happy, then you're also not at your most powerful. So if you're not happy in a relationship, in a job, um, in studying, whatever you're studying at school, why are you doing it again? Um, is it for yourself or is it for others? You've got to go into that. We have the 10 of wands. Um, so for those of you that feel blocked, I feel like you're almost through the toughest part here. This shows that it's um, that you've already kind of gone uphill and now you're you're going to a plateau here. You've been down the hill, you're, you're onto a new path. So I feel like surrendering and entering into that new path and letting go, the 10 of wands usually is the end of a cycle. So hopefully that cycle is going to now in include a new cycle of like love and happiness and fulfillment. This is the ego, this is the rebirth card. The sun usually has a baby on it, but I actually love that we're seeing this beautiful solar energy going in. Um, interestingly enough, it's not going through her solar plexus. She's kind of like um, dancing in that energy. But uh, what I would say with the sun is it's know yourself, uh, be happy. This is um, in the upright position. There's nothing really bad with the sun. Uh, it's almost as strong as the star because basically it's saying that I don't have to hide who I am. See my light. We talked about that earlier, right? Um, so let's take a look here at the three of cups again, celebrating your the little successes in your life. There's a positive energy to this card, celebrating successes, making time for people in your life that you love and for the things that you love as well. 
<clears throat> finding some sort of joy in the work that you're doing as well. Super important. Um, if it feels like it's just work, then you're going to get lost. Um, notice here how they're kind of holding each other up. It's a teamwork. They're not trying to push against each other like we so often see in the Five of Wands. And um, it's always about you when it comes to the Six of Wands. Like the other people, that's, you just see the hands reaching up for you, right? You look really close, you can see all these hands. But it's your choice on how, how much to give as well. I had some questions earlier that someone was posting, it was too invasive. You can just sort of like say, no, this isn't the right time, this isn't the right place for that. And there's always boundaries. So you always have to kind of like honor your boundaries and do things because it feels right for you. So you're, you're maybe not stuck, you're maybe being shown that you need to move somewhere else. Um, if you go back into the history of the hanged man, it's like Odin, right? Um, he lost an eye, he hung on that tree, he, he gained knowledge, but he, there was a, basically it was a sort of desired energy. He hung out there so he could see something. So if you're stuck right now, you're stuck until you learn the lesson. Once you learn the lesson, you're free to move or you might see a way around it. Um, so yes, you're stuck, some of you, but it's because the lesson hasn't been integrated yet. As soon as that's been done, then the teaching, has, the teaching lesson is gone and, and you can move on. Uh, what I'm looking at, how to unblock yourself or to become unstuck, we have the Hierophant in reverse, which is, I love this Hierophant. He seems super happy, and it's not the sort of, um, normally you see a Pope or a high priest, but they're very serious. And in this, we see joy, and joy is like that kind of breakthrough. And it's also a non-traditional, um, non-conformist energy. So, you know, there were questions earlier about going against the grain. This is spot on with that. It's your time to go against the grain. Um, and hello, we're all here for intuitive uh, development. This is really about answering the call that's coming through for all of you. So I feel like it's there. Um, and if you can just trust and start to plant the seeds and see that it will happen, go for it. I love that we see a surfer here because I never really interpreted it this way, but there are, um, there's high tide, there's low tide. There's, there's going to be like some bumpy, uh, sort of turbulence when you're in the water sometimes, and sometimes it's easy. So the three of wands actually involves going through all of that. I always love a nice active three of wands when they're actually going out and doing something, not just waiting for it to happen. So she has her surfboard here. She's ready to go out. She's ready to tackle it. She sees the positives in this and she's going to, to make it happen at any cost, right? So if I were to summarize this, I would say open yourself up to receive, do what you need to do for yourself. Um, know that the pause is here because a lesson is coming through and you really have to believe and want to develop that future. The high priestess and three of wands energy here is so beautiful. So see it and then do it and do it with joy and passion, right? Okay. And um, let's look at intuitive development really quick. And then we're almost at time. But if I have any time, I'll answer one or two questions before I close. Um, we'll actually do a little meditation before I close. Very, very brief one. I may not do a sound bowl. Um, all right. So let's look at intuitive growth and any advice that comes through with that. Okay, some beautiful cards and beautiful messages here. Um, the first, there's a lot of fear and, um, and emotion that you have to work through first. The Five of Cups here is focusing on what, the person that was asking me, what if we don't have enough time? Um, what if you have just enough time to do exactly what you need to do and there's some great things here that are waiting for you? This is really about uh, saying, I'm ready now, I'm gonna move towards that. Uh, and this, this brought me to this higher ground that I'm at right now. So perspective, getting perspective on it. And when it comes to intuitive development or creative development, for those of you that might be using it in a more practical way, this is really about not worrying about how long it's taken to get somewhere to get something done. It's just like, yeah, but I'm making progress. Transparency and knowing that thoughts can be your, your own cage. This is a great Eight of Swords card. We can think ourselves into a prison, into, a, into our own cage. Think yourself out of it. Just, just decide, I'm, I'm done with this. That thought is so powerful. And um, it's also really powerful when it comes to, you have to get out of a, a limited way of thinking in order to open up your intuition. 
So thinking to yourself, I am a powerful intuitive that's ready to receive, you will become a powerful intuitive that's ready to receive. Joy, passion, I think we've been talking about this so much today, but to really feel what you're doing, mind, body, and spirit, and realize that that becomes a cyclical positive thing. Um, so that euphoria then brings like positive momentum into your life with the Eight of Cups as well. Um, the only thing that might be holding some of you back, and this doesn't surprise me uh, that it came through, usually I'll get the Devil or the Nine of Swords. Some of you are just afraid of what you might see or what you might connect with. You should watch some of my videos on intuitive development. I have a series. Um, but one of the things that you want to do is set the intention. Before I read, for all of you, I light um, four, five, six, six candles behind me. Each one represents a prayer. And all of the, and I also burn some incense. I have that right next to the candle over there. So I'll burn it right afterwards as well. But I, um, I basically connect to the highest source. I create uh, sort of a nice safe space and I set the intention that I want to only receive energy of love, light, compassion, and the divine. So do that and you don't have to worry. If you're afraid of seeing or feeling things at dream time, same thing. You wanna pull a protective veil around yourself and just trust that you're gonna be able to handle whatever comes through. And, um, and basically say that, call in your guides and say only the highest energy can be here, right? Um, so if someone was asking a question about like meditating without the mind wandering. Breathe, focus on breathing and focus on listening to something like a gong or a healing bowl or something like that as a singing bowl. Um, and then really just the breath. I did a lot of work in yoga. Just go practice any type of yoga and breathe and listen to yourself breathing. Um, and then you can use white noise of any sort if you want to. It was raining here in Los Angeles last night. And so the pitter patter of rain is a nice kind of like white noise thing. But if your mind is wandering, why are you afraid to go where it's wandering? That's your intuition. You're not supposed to go quiet. You're supposed to see what you see. Eventually your mind will get to a point where it's at peace and you'll just be able to connect even higher, but you got to get through the noise first. So as you meditate more, the noise will go away. King of Pentacles reversed. Um, this is also about figuring out, <laughs> this is a personal development right now. So what are you doing right now to bring yourself into a higher energy to, to lift yourself up? Is there anyone around you that's taking too much? Because the King of Pentacles can be selfish too. So from your own perspective, I would say focus on internal development for people around you, exercise caution and boundaries so that you're not giving too much. Once you start to do this, you'll have more to play with um, energetically and you'll be able to do more. Um, I think this is super important for all intuitives. We have the star card reversed. Um, and huh, the star card is about really being able to accept yourself. Um, I don't know, this is probably a month ago or something, but I was reading for someone who was clearly psychic, but didn't want to admit it and was afraid of what other people would think or say. And so you have to kind of like come out to yourself first as an intuitive, as a psychic, as someone who is connected and not be afraid of what people will think. Because if you have fear of rejection, they're going to pick up on that and they're going to fulfill that role that you just played for or that you just wrote for them. Whenever you have the star, the high priestess, and it's reversed, there's a reminder there that you are a creator you can manipulate the energy in a positive way. So when you say, I have something exciting to share with you, um, I've been working on myself and I've discovered that I have some new skills and I really am looking forward to um, trying, uh, trying this out or I've decided to make a career move. It feels really great. Um, I hope you're happy for me. I'm sharing this with you because I care about you. Um, you give them a little bit of room to give feedback, but mostly just say, I have to share something because I care about you and I, this is exciting for me. Don't really give them room to kind of like, you, if you don't want the criticism, don't invite it in, but share with them what you are trying to do, what, what's making you happy, and don't sell yourself short. Um, because this is a light that's been muted and I want it to be super bright. So be the bright star that you are and give people a chance to, to see it. Now I don't care, like, I, I understand because I came from a very sort of serious background and I knew that once I put my last name, that if you Googled me, you'd just see a bunch of pictures of me with cards and crystals and all this stuff. But eventually I'm like, yeah, that's what I do. So who cares? It's a good thing. I worked really hard. I work really hard at what I do here. So Google me, watch some stuff. I hope you like it. Um, when you're more in the power of it, it doesn't matter. If you're apologizing for what you're doing, then you're not really as powerful as you could be, right? 
Okay, so are you trying to monetize it or are you trying to, what's this about? So the Wheel of Fortune is powerful because it shows a new cycle. But for some of you, there could be a concern of like, I can't leave this because of the money or what will, what will this mean to my overall kind of like future or portfolio or resume? I don't know if these two can all, they, they don't have to be mutually exclusive, but this shouldn't rule this. There can be a way to bring the two together. So I challenge you, like I was with that filmmaker, to do both, to just be a really creative professional if you want to be a, you know, there's no reason that you can't work in finance and then use your intuitive ability to help you make some really cool judgment calls when it comes to how to develop finances or whatever. I, <laughs> it's not my cup of tea, but I can see how every single career could benefit from um, of an epiphany, basically, or an out-of-the-box way of thinking, right? Okay. Uh, we have the Four of Wands here, which I love. Uh, the, this is the only one that I've ever seen with a horse or someone riding the horse. Um, notice how there is multiple forks in the road here. There's a lot of different places this person can go. You get to choose your own adventure every single day, every single thought, every single moment. So what are you trying to do? You got to ground yourself in what it is you're trying to do and then put it into practice. We've got the three of pentacles here. Fantastic card to end on for intuitive uh, development. Uh, first of all, I can't stress enough how important it is to like physically write sometimes or to like type it all out because when you do that, some really cool stuff happens. You're able to make connections that you wouldn't make otherwise. So uh, write it out, learn, um, go to school, take a class. Um, you know, teach yourself, whatever you want to do. This is really about mastering something that you, you really care about, right? Um, I'm going to look at a couple of final questions here and we'll talk until uh, about 1.30 and then I'll wrap it up here. So, um, or, well, one hour and 30 minutes. So um, let's see, you were wondering about past life regressions. Uh, wondering if kids would benefit from ending cycles. So let me just talk just broadly about past life regressions. I think that they have a time and a place and I think that they're good, but um, sometimes we focus too much on what we were in the past. I think that it's good to kind of occasionally go back and see something uh, that will help us, but I've maybe had 10 flashbacks or so, which is a lot, but they tend to come through exactly when I need to see them, giving me exactly what I need to see. There are things in the past that we purposely forget so that we're not traumatized by it. Um, you know, maybe some of that does need to be deal, uh, dealt with if there's a lot of trauma in your life, but sometimes we're meant to overcome our limitations from the past. And when we see how we were limited in the past, it can actually limit, a, limit, limit us here. So I would just imagine that as you do a past life regression, you see exactly what you need to, to see and you don't need to do it all the time. I don't think I, I'm grateful for when it comes through, but I don't feel like I want to live in the past. I want to live in the present. I just want that little bit of context if I have a block. A lot of times when I've had the past life flashbacks, so it's been sort of like self-regression, um, involuntary, like through dreams or meditation. But when I have those flashbacks, it's often come when there's a person in, or a pattern in my life that I need to release. Sometimes I've been at a workplace working for or with people and they, the, my guides wanted to show me the pattern of codependency that was there. Or sometimes there's been people in my life and I wondered why they were sticking around and I could see that there was a contract in place. So I see it when I need to see it, but I don't think everybody needs to do it unless you're ready for it or um, or you're at a point in your life where it, where it makes sense. So if you want it, good. Don't worry if you're not picking up on anything. It probably means that there are other areas you could focus your intuition. Never force it. Intuition should be natural. Let's see. Um, I'm just looking at some other stuff here. I don't have a podcast, but I plan on doing a podcast soon. Uh, I just have to figure out how to um, put some extra time into that. But yeah, that's on my to-do list. So thanks. I'm glad you guys are interested in it. Um, what would you recommend? Um, let's see. What would you recommend for heart chakra opening? Come come on the weekend. We'll talk more about that. That's actually all that Sunday's about. So I'm going to save that, Sarah. Um, so come back on Sunday. We'll be looking at the heart chakra relationships. We'll also be looking at retrograde and the two may overlap, which is good. Let me see if there's anything else. Um, let's take a moment and we're gonna do a quick meditation. Um, just one that I want you, usually people drop off, don't. I might answer one more question before I leave. But um, what I wanna show you is how you can have a difficult conversation with someone and put light around yourself. Um, so if you're gonna read for someone or if you're going to go and talk to your boss, 
you can do this in your head before you open the door. Just close your eyes and imagine that you're in a circle of light. Sweep the light around your body and see it going into a cylinder above and below. And imagine that you're connecting the sun or the moon to the center of the earth and see yourself in that string of light. Wherever you walk, that's going to follow you. And it's almost like you have this spotlight and this string of energy that's going through you. If you're going to be in a really difficult conversation, just imagine that that light continues to come through you like a cycle. Um, and you, if so, nobody can kind of get into that, you would say, I only allow within this boundary of light, um, love, light, compassion, God, higher energy, higher guides to come through. Uh, and imagine that it can be only like you have to accept the energy to come through or it gets bounced back. So you can just imagine a spotlight. And that's a very simple meditation that I will at minimum do with a client before I start reading with them or if I have to have a, a hard conversation with someone. If you can jointly get the other person to see themselves in a separate spotlight, awesome, because there's even more protection. But as long as you're in that spotlight, it's great. A meditation can be like 15 seconds, 30 seconds. Little tiny things like that will help you quite a bit, right? So um, let me see, one last question. Let me just kind of scan up and then don't worry, I will do more, hopefully you guys like this. Um, I will do more of these. Uh, here, if you like them on YouTube, definitely on Instagram, because I can answer questions a little bit easier. Um, so yes, I will do a podcast. I, I'm not going to give away all the topics on it, but I would like to do a podcast. Um, let's see. Okay, trying to incorporate my art and songwriting self with this past. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm just trying to look at one more. I'm going to scroll all the way up and see if I missed something from earlier. Um, it would be great to connect with the source. Okay, that's an interesting question. This was from earlier on. So source energy, thats I think that's the easiest thing to kind of connect to. You're, whatever, you're, whatever you decide the divine is, um, just close your eyes and imagine that you are um, plugging into that like an outlet and you can call it by its name. So if it's, you know, if it's God, if it's um, Buddha, if it's something else, like call out to it and say, um, let's have a chat. I'm ready to talk. And you can talk to the highest possible energy. It will, it will connect with you. You can, you can connect with the ascended masters, Jesus, God, etc. It's not just for, this is the interesting thing with the hierarchy. So this is where the hierophant card or the high priest sometimes is a block, right? And I, we didn't even get into this. And this is a really good thing to close with. You are your own connection to the divine. You don't have to be in a temple, a church or a mosque or a prayer group to connect to divine source. You just have to close your eyes. You have to believe that you're ready and willing and able to connect to it and just listen. Have fun seeing what comes through. It should feel good. Um, set the connection, like the intention that I'm ready to receive love, light, and the highest form and in intuition in the highest form. And then just let the light shine in and see what comes through. Don't judge it. I think that's one super important thing when it comes to intuition is just to observe and to imagine that you're kind of like a reporter. I had advice for a client the other day that was writing, and it's the same. Writing and reading are the same because they're intuitive. But I said, as a writer, I'm a reporter. And even when I come here today to talk to you guys, um, all I have to do is talk about what I'm seeing and feeling. I don't have to judge it. I don't have to edit it. Um, I try to find the best words to convey it. But to be more intuitive and to connect to source, just observe and report. That's it. It's easy. Um, we think it through too much and it gets kind of convoluted, right? Does that make sense? Um, I think, I think we're going to pause at that because we're right at time. I want to give my moderators a break and we're going to do more of these. So if you like what you see, become a channel member because you can then ask questions in advance. I take those at the beginning and I'll do that even for the Instagram ones. You can do it on Patreon or on uh, the YouTube thing. I'm going to give you some links right now so that you can connect with me across all of this. So if you want to become um, a Patreon patron, here's the link to do that. If you want to um, join me on YouTube, you can just click the join button right there. And that will, I saw we got a couple of new channel members. Um, you should follow me on social media if you haven't already. Um, you can go there to see my Instagram link. I just posted the links to that. Um, and my live schedule is always posted on my website right there. And I have a couple ways that you can give back. I know some of you had trouble with Super Chat today. Um, you can use, if you don't want to join in a sort of monthly basis or anything, you can use PayPal. I also just realized they set up a, a Venmo for businesses. So I now have a Venmo, which I haven't before. So 
you can use the Venmo if you'd like to. Um, so those are a couple ways that you can get in touch with me outside of all of that. Um, if you are interested in reading a book and having some fun, you should check out my book. It's called The Luminous Ones, and it's available um, across uh, most major retailers as well. And um, just a quick reminder that I'm going to be back on Sunday. So a little more structured on Sunday. I will be pulling um, two Celtic crosses. We'll be looking at uh, relationships and retrograde. And I'll have some channel messages at the beginning that will help with all of that. And um, I look forward to seeing where that takes us. And then I'll have all my regulars. I wanted to do a couple of informal ones over the course of a month. So I think it would be nice to continue with fireside chats. Welcome to the new members that are joining um, because it's a chance to just get a little bit more one-on-one -on -one with all of you. And, um, and then the collectives are a way to bring messages for all of you. Uh, there'll be more reading and more cards on the Sunday reading. Today was a chance to just sort of like say hi and be able to actually look at the chat. So I'm glad you enjoyed it. There'll be more of it. It looks like there was a lot of people that showed up today. So I'll do more if you guys like it. Um, thank you so much for your love, your support. Um, thanks for all of the super chats. And um, I don't know why it wasn't working for some of you. I'll look into it. It looks like it was working for most. So sometimes the YouTube gods are just crazy and um, hopefully it'll work out on the weekend. Meantime, thank you Dakota and Maria for showing up an extra day this month. Uh, and thank you everybody for also showing up. Uh, these will be more impromptu when I do the fireside chats. Uh, collectives I always usually do on the last day of the month or the last Sunday of the month if I can. But this one I'll just kind of sprinkle in. And uh, on Instagram, uh, let me see if I can get my direct link to the Instagram in case you don't have it. You can follow me there and I just randomly go live. So it's more fun that way because I don't have to plan it. Um, this was fun, but it's also kind of fun to just think like, oh, I've got a lot to talk about. I'm going to go live. So I'll do that sometimes with Instagram. So follow me if you haven't. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. Have a lovely weekend. Stay warm. Stay safe. I know the weather uh, is kind of crazy across uh, Canada and the United States and a lot of <laughs> probably Europe even right now. It's winter. So what to expect. Take care of yourself and I'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.